Right. Ah, uh, that's nice. Good morning or good evening to you because it is morning to me. Here, uh, I'm in uh, New South Wales. We've changed our clocks and it's now a little bit more decent a time. It's like 5.15 in the morning as opposed to 4.15 in the morning. But uh, absolutely nice to see everybody again and uh, connect with you and share the Dhamma so precious and rare. Find peace in our lives and peace in our minds. Because uh, you're not going to find it anywhere else. So we'll start with a bit of meditation and we'll um, continue with the Dhamma talk after that. So if I hope everyone is in a nice, comfortable room that's warm and quiet and uh Hopefully you won't be disturbed for the next half an hour or so. Right, so making yourself nice and comfortable. Allowing yourself to withdraw from the world. Allowing yourself to let go of everything that was happening just before. Coming into the room, finding the computer, setting up. And allowing yourself to land. Land in this space. Land in your body. Land in your heart. Noticing, noticing what is going on, noticing how you're feeling, Getting to know your body and your heart and your mind, your your head, you could say. Not forcing anything to happen. Not trying to make it still. 
just getting to know yourself. Getting to hear yourself. In your mind, in this body, in these feelings, in this, these five kind of things, these sensations. Allowing things to unfold. Allowing yourself to relax. And bring, keeping, making sure your mind is here. And it wanders away in thought. Coming back to yourself. Today, I thought we'd talk about uh, the four heavenly messengers. And um, one of the heavenly messengers is, is uh, death. And it's uh, something that we're all going to be facing. at a very unknown time. So 
So we have to be ready. Ready to face death. Even today. How are you going to be? How do you feel right now if you know these are your last hours? Perhaps last minutes. You have come to the end of your life. What is going through your mind? It happens suddenly to all of us. So we prepare now for that moment. Come for your last moment, your last day, your last hour. You know that everything in this world, everything that you've relied on, everything you've cherished. Everything is just going to disappear. You will have none of it left. You go alone. But you take with you, you take with you your habits, you take with you the way you think, the way you feel, your karma.
What is our attitude? How do we relate? How do we relate to what we can never hold on to? Not even our body. Not even our thoughts. Even they, we cannot fix and control. We learn to let go. We learn to accept. We learn that fighting is of no use. We learn to just let nature unfold. We become a witness. Silent observer. Allowing pain or the suffering, allowing it to take its course.
bringing your mind back if it wanders away. Remembering we have stepped back and we allow we allow suffering to arise. And allow it to go by. Bring our minds back. It's wandered away. And slowly come to the end of this very short meditation. Bringing your mind back, back to this room, back to this body, back to the space wherein. And taking note what happened in the last half an hour. Is there anything that uh, stood out, anything that you can learn from?
And as we wrap up, we share the merits of our any peace we have accumulated, any goodness of our lives. We share it with all our loved ones. All those around us, wishing them well, may they find peace for themselves, ease in their lives. Because we might not always be there. And to all beings, ultimately, those who we know, those who we don't know, may all beings be their own good friends. May they have peace in their own hearts. May they live their lives well. May they be free from hunger and violence. May all beings be well. May all beings be at peace. And when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. Mm. Okay. So I hope that was uh, uh, useful for you. Uh, a good reflection because we kind of think we're in charge of our lives, but it actually, you know, it actually doesn't work that way. And um, sickness, death come when we don't want it. <laughs> Not the way we want it. And however much we've planned, we've got our insurance policies, we've got our pension, we've got our old, uh, you know, our, our, our old age home lined up for us. 
it might not all not turn out that way. So um, this is one of the Buddha's, you know, most wonderful reflections. We think that reflecting on death is morbid, but actually, I'm not sure about you, but when I reflect on death, I kind of feel relieved. <laughs> I can finally stop fixing the world. I was never going to be there all the time anyway. People look after themselves when I go, I'm gone, regardless of, of, of uh, whatever I do. People have an amazing ability to move on and look after themselves, your children included. So um, the, um, I heard the Dalai Lama once, well, I, I read a quote anyway from the Dalai Lama. He, he said, in order to make money, trying to make money, trying to earn a living, we make ourselves sick. And then in order to get our health back, we spend all our money <laughs> <laughs> we live like we're never going to die and we die having never really lived so this is what the four heavenly messengers they're called heavenly messengers strange enough does everyone do do people do people know what the four heavenly messengers are? Who does know? Who doesn't know? Rather, who doesn't know? Who doesn't know? Oh, there are people who don't know what the four heavenly great. Okay, the four heavenly messengers. So, when the Buddha, well, when he was still uh, a young, uh, I guess, uh, like us has everything, young man in the prime of his youth, living in luxury in a, as a prince in a palace, so they say, his father didn't want him to know what suffering was because the rumor was that this little boy, well, when he was a little baby, the rumor was, it was foretold that he was, would leave the kingdom and wander the, uh, uh, give everything up and become a renunciate. So his father definitely did not want this. He wanted his son around to take over the kingdom and to run the palace, run, run, run things the way they should. In fact, his, the, the other option for, was for him to be a wheel turning monarch. A wheel turning monarch is someone who is, rules righteously and rules the world with goodness and brings peace and harmony. So that's what his father preferred. And the story goes that his plan was for his son to absolutely enjoy himself. He had no... Uh, well, what it was, it was no old people came into the villa, into the kingdom, no sick people came into the kingdom. There was always dancing and, you know, he, he studied well. He was surrounded by youth and beauty. As we are, isn't it, when we walk down the streets of, of uh, London or down the streets of uh, Sydney? How many people do you see who are struggling with death or struggling with sickness? We don't come across it. We, when someone does, you know, become sick, we go, oh my goodness, what went wrong? We rush to the doctor. We take a whole bunch of pills. Um, we send them off to nursing homes when they're old. We, don't have anyone in a house, you know, lying in excrement. We don't see people on the street lying in excre excrement. 
as you do when you're dying. So uh, I remember meeting in while we were in Oxford, a little boy came to uh, with his dad, and I was telling I was telling the story of uh, anyway the the uh, the Buddha and and a, a little bird that had died that he was saving, and his father said, you know. He has no idea. This he has no idea what a bird dying is. He has never seen a bird die. He has this little boy, as all as as many children, has never we have never really seen anything die before us. And so we kind of uh, live in a similar world to what the Buddha did. We live thinking that you know. Uh, if we try hard enough, if we manage everything, we'll have perfect health and then somehow in the distant future just drop dead. No sickness in between. If sickness comes our way, we have a big operation or we, uh, uh, I don't know, take a whole lot of supplements, have alternative health, <laughs> health regimes. And we, we, we think that Somehow, if we tried hard enough, all these things would evade us. So the four heavenly messengers was the Buddha going out into the world. One day he um, got his, his um, charioteer, Channa, to, to uh, uh, get, well, get him surreptitiously out the out the palace gates and go for a wander around the town. And there were four trips, and each trip was one of the heavenly messengers that came past him. So uh, in his first trip out, he was wandering down the streets, well, riding down the streets, and he came across an old person. And he had never seen one before, someone bent and frail, not able to look after themselves. Um, with their youth gone, their hair all white, their teeth fallen out. And he came back and he said, what the heck is that? And his chan, chan, his charioteer said, "Your Highness, that's that's an old person." He said, "I didn't know that happened to us. I thought I always looked this way." No, he said, "That's that's what happens to all of us if we live long enough. We lose our teeth. We go bent. We can't. We our hair goes white, and uh, we have no strength left in our body." So he's quite shocked. It's a second trip out and again wandering through the um, kingdom, he came across a sick person, someone who was uh, unable to look after themselves, lying in their own excrement, not able to feed themselves, not able to stand up. And again he came back and he asked Channa, his uh, charioteer, what was that? I've never seen anything like it. What has happened to that person? And he said, well, your, your highness, that's a, that's an, that's a sick person. That's, that happens to us. He said, what? It happens to me? I'm perfectly fine. I can look after myself. And he said, no, no, from time to time, the body is unable to do what it usually does. It is um, incapacitated. It, it uh, can't look after itself. It lies in its own excrement because unless there is someone to clean it, it uh, can't, look, uh, can't uh, take care of itself. And so this second heavenly messenger made an imprint on the young prince's mind. 
And so a third trip out of the uh, palace gates, because he was really like, now something is going on. <laughs> and uh, they come across a dead body, something that is lifeless, being carried away as they do in India through the streets to chanting. Um, and uh, he comes back and he asks his charity, what the heck was that? And uh, Chandra says to him, well, sir, that is a dead body. He said, what the heck is a dead body? He said, well, that happens to all of us. After a while, we pass on and that's what's left behind. So all this was quite a, sh a shock to the prince, as it is to us. Because um, yesterday I listened, I was at, uh, I watched online the funeral of uh, uh, a friend's mother, and well, it's a very beautiful ceremony. It's in a beautiful church with a beautiful coffin with beautiful flowers on top. And I'm sure if you open the coffin and saw the body, she'd be dressed in her best sari. She'd be made up with all the wrinkles pulled out of her face. And she'd look like, well, she always did. So um, we don't see dead bodies. We don't see sickness. We don't see that... Uh, one day, this is our fate. We will just be a bunch of bones decaying in a cemetery or in a crematorium, burnt to, the, burnt to cinders. But then there was a fourth heavenly messenger. There were not only three heavenly messengers. There was a fourth heavenly messenger. So on the fourth trip, the Buddha goes out with his um, charioteer and going past is a monk, a summoner, a renunciate. And he asks Shana, who is that? And Shana says, Sir, Your Highness, that is someone who is in search of the truth. Someone who has left this world and is looking for a way out. Someone who is trying to find true happiness. I'm not sure if that's exactly what he said. But uh, so this person had such a demeanor. It struck the Buddha. What looks so different about a renunciate? Why is he so different from everybody else? True, he's, he doesn't own anything. He, he's wearing a robe and... Uh, um, you know, he looks different, but there's something different when we see a true renunciate, when we see someone who has uh, found another type of happiness. There is a peace in their face, and we look at them twice and go, they're different. They don't have everything in the world. They don't have a pension and a, a mortgage-free home and a, a good healthcare system. But there, there is something else. And so the sight of the summoner is also a heavenly messenger, as it was for the Buddha, because in the end, that is what the, the the path that he followed he did not 
stay at home and meditate in his lounge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, but he left he left his home and he gave up everything in search of the truth because he saw in the face of this Samana something else, something you know. They they know something I don't. So the Buddha says that we are intoxicated. We are intoxicated with youth. We are intoxicated with our health. And we are intoxicated with being alive. He uses, uses those, the word intoxication because when you look at a young person, most young people, I'm sure not Susie, but don't they do the stupidest things thinking that they, it has no consequence? Thinking that um, getting drunk or I <laughs> the ridiculous things that I did when I was young. Um, I'm not going to go down that road. But somehow that it didn't matter. Uh, and how do we live even now? You know, somehow we think that uh, what, we, what we say, what we do, that it doesn't matter. There are no consequences because we're just going to be always alive. We're always going to be here, you know, in this house and we're always going to uh, be healthy and we're always, you know, going to have things go our way. So the intoxication, intoxication that we have with our life, thinking that What we do doesn't matter. It's all going to work out. So, this is why it's a heavenly messenger. This is why death and sickness, especially sickness, that kind of happens to us in our everyday life you know the moment we i fall sick i mean i do everything possible to make it go away i'm taking pills i'm lying down i'm resting i look up on the internet what can i do but all these things you know they are a wake up call they are a wake up call that things we are not in charge, you know. Life is out of control. So these little moments when when things kind of get blurred and go, ah! those are little, those are little teachers, those are little lights that go like, aha, I don't think I I don't think I don't think I can fix this all the time. So knowing that all these things are going to come our way, how do we face our lives? If you were going to be dead tonight, what is important? So I ask you to ask yourself, if you were going to be dead tonight, which is very possible. How would you be treating the people around you? How would you be caring for the people around you? Your children, your partners, your parents. Would you take them for granted? 
they could be dead too. Would you think that if you, you can manage their lives, that you can somehow arrange things so that, you know, we can all live happily ever after? Or would you know that they'll have to take care, take care of themselves? And our, jobs is, our job is to um, allow them to grow, allow them to help them to be on their own two feet. We spend so much time stressing out, getting our jobs done, earning money, paying bills. But how much time do we spend with our loved ones? Listening, how did they go in that day? How are you? We take them for granted, we take our lives for granted, we take our people for granted. So instead of, did you do this, did you do that? <laughs> Haven't you done this? Haven't you done that? If you were going to die tonight, wouldn't you spend time with the people you love? Telling them that you care for them. So what are the other things that come to your mind when you know that death is near? Well, um, I have a few things that, that came to my mind. Is, uh, you know, we change our priorities. We change our priorities from uh, from uh, trying to, thinking that if we tried hard enough, everything's going to be nice and all right. The mortgage is going to get paid. All the jobs are going to get done. And if we... Uh, uh, somehow in the great distant future, we're all going to be living happily ever after. So our priorities change from something that we're chasing in the future to how we live our life today. How do we um, do our work, expecting everything to everyone to do the right thing, or knowing that people make mistakes? How do we relate to our house and our possessions, fixing everything up? or knowing that things are naturally break down. Things naturally don't work out. So we learn to take life not so seriously. We learn that we are not in charge we learn that we're just, um, you know, it, nothing to hold on to it was never ours in the first place. So we change our priorities and we look on life with ease instead of holding on tightly onto everything. And the last thing that came to my mind is as I uh, 
reflected if I was going to be dead. What came to mind was gratitude, you know, because so many, yourself included, so many people have helped you to be where you are. Your parents, your loved ones, your partner, your children, the man in the shop, the person who cleans, the, sweeps the street, the one who takes out your garbage, the prime minister, for God's sake, all of them have helped you to live your life. So, a sense of gratitude for all the people who are part of your life. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be the best human being I have tried to be. So, this is all very down and morose and serious. I'm sorry. It's 5.15 in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm also on a retreat. So these are the things that you think of while you're on retreat. Death. <laughs> but yeah, um, it is important. But, you know, sorry to sound a little bit morose. <laughs> anyway, we'll kind of wrap up there. And... Uh, perhaps um, have a bit of a chat because there's not so many people here and, you know, just hear how you relate to death and how you relate to sickness and, and, um, wow, we're finishing, we're finishing in another half an hour, right? Okay, good. It's breakfast down there. <laughs> yeah. So how you relate to these four heavenly messengers. And yeah, just to share with all of us here, if um, you, yeah, any reflections and uh, anything to share really. Because heck, you don't want to hear, keep hearing me. <laughs> yeah, Derek. Oh, Derek is just saying sad, sad, sad. Yes, sad, sad, sad. Oh, Veronica, splendid talk. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you. Okay. I will. Not something for us. Thanks. <laughs> um, yes, Susie, yeah. Um, hi, Vanderbo, Vika. Hello. Um, hello. Um, I just wanted to add, I was in another live stream not too long ago, and there was this nun called um, Aya Soma. All right. Yes, and she was saying, like, she was walking down the street, and um, this paraphrasing, uh, she was walking down the street in a very poverty area, and she was being so much, you could see the people's faces, get, like, lighting up for it with so much joy from seeing her. I'm oh. not sure if people respond to you in that way but I like I get the same feeling from a lot of religious people who devote their lives yeah. to religion because it's very it's very um interesting because it's like a different yeah. path mm. alternative living to the to the household uh, mm. um oh yes and um mm. um about the whole di um death thing I would be I would like rejoice in so many people's like qualities um, mm. everyone here, um, everyone here and everyone who I'm involved with in my life, I'd just be so happy for them. Mm. I try Sad. to be. Sad. You've got such a lovely mind. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, Richard. Oh, 
Richard's doing funny things to his camera. Okay, right. Yeah, Richard is unmuted now. Richard? Yes, hi, Venor. It's nice to see you again. Um, the very t it's very, very good talk about death. I mean, to be honest, I'm very similar to you about dying. Uh, actually, when you started talking about dying, and, and you were, to be honest, you're going, yes, I'm going to die. And I was actually sitting there with a big grin on my face as well. Uh -huh. I had the same feeling. And I'm thinking, well, I can't do this. I can't sit here with a big grin on my face, thinking exactly the same way that you were thinking, to be honest. Thinking, yes, it's really good, actually. It's really true. Because I, because I remember about three or four months ago, and this when Ajahn Bomali was in England, and mm. one of his, um, I think, no, no, he wasn't in England, but one of the meditations he did on YouTube was actually about dying. And he was mm. actually talking about death, and he actually was recommending about how people actually die is actually giving everything up. And um, mm -hmm. by literally letting go of everything, which is the mm -hmm. basis of um, daily practice anyway, in meditation, which is like, you know, Ajahn Brahm and Ajahn Cha mm -hmm. is the basis that the more you give up, then the more happy you become. And mm -hmm. obviously the perfect example of that would be is the Buddha. The Buddha, mm -hmm. you know, final example is the Buddha when he's dying and goes to Nibbana. It's the final extinguishing. So, yes, it's very, I find, um, so it's very nice and quite inspiring yeah. the way that you were talking about that. And it was, uh, I find it very, it resonated with myself. So I was wow. um, quite surprised how I was grinning. Uh, it made me <laughs> smile a lot. And I'm thinking, no, I can't be so morbid, but um, as yourself as well. I thought it was quite, um, quite looking forward to dying, actually. That's why mm. I'm for the same reasons as yourself. So um, I have no problems with that, actually, personally. So I find it quite nice. You know, the the more and more I give up anyway, the more and more peaceful mm. things become. It's not because I don't care, or mm. people, but um, I do actually try to um, you know, have an attitude of actually helping other people practice mm. matter that way. And I do appreciate people that um, the more that people do, do appreciate the road sweeper. I do appreciate um, that people, all the things that people have done, people, all the mm. people that actually built the house, all okay. the people that um, built the houses brick by brick, all the mm. people that put, that had all the food delivered, you know, from overseas, all the people that, um, you know, come around and pick up pick up the rubbish in the rubbish trucks. You know, mm. all the people do all these things. I mean, okay, they get paid for it, you know, but they do that also out of the kindness of their heart. So there is a sense of gratitude for them. And um, many years ago, I was sick as well, and I almost died. So really, I shouldn't actually be sitting here right now talking to you. Because if I was born in a poor country, I would be dead. So mm. um, I should have been dead before I was 60. So now I'm 65 and a half. So now I've been mm. here longer than I should be. So it's a good messenger. Mm. So yes, I thought I'd just share that with you. And um, I appreciate your talk. Yeah. Nice to see you again. Yes, thank you. As thank always you. for sharing. Thank always you. love to hear from you. And you too. Thank you, Heidi. Yeah. You can unmute, Heidi. Thanks, Richard. Uh, yeah, no, like Richard, I've been, I think death is uh, maybe a, an adventure in a way. I can see, you know, I've seen other people when they've, when they've moved on and it's a release for them. But I've been thinking recently, the past few days, just reading books and things, thinking it's an experience to be lived, just like all experiences that we that we that we can encounter while we have a body. And I think it's um it's it's just another finding out experience of what 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 there is in the world. So hmm. um, I think it's maybe just like passing through a door, it's a natural process that we could appreciate. Mm. That's, all. that's true thank you thank you yeah actually i mean we're, we're just guessing what death is is but um 
from what I've read, most people who have had these near-death experiences don't want to come back because it was so nice. It, they, they see a bright light and they, they meet God or they meet their families or, or whatever it is. But it seems to be that uh, actually the dying process after you have died is a great release and a great joy. It's um, you, you've let go of your five, your body and what a relief. I mean, it's been this decrepit, painful thing and all of a sudden it's gone. So uh, you're right, it is, a, it is an adventure and sounds like it's, it's, it might be actually quite a nice one. It's the pain leading up to it, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Deal with that when that comes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michelle. Michelle, you can unmute. Yes. Uh, have I unmuted? Yep, yes. Can yeah. Hear you. Yeah. Hello. I'm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name properly i'm so sorry that's all right it's upeka. Upeka. Upeka, upeka it's so lovely to be here this is the second time i've been to one of your talks mm -hmm. and i didn't know it was going to be about dying so it was a bit of a surprise <laughs> but um i'd love to share um with you um that my parents died last year at the same time as my Zen master, Thich Nhat Hanh. And uh, it was just such a, a wonderful experience for me. And I've been a Zen Buddhist many years, maybe 20 years. So, you know, my Zen masters had taught me, trained me many years how to mm. die well mm. and uh, and yeah so I really enjoyed your talk what you said about gratitude you know it made me laugh because you know the prime minister has <laughs> supported me and tried to encourage me to believe in myself and so many people doesn't matter who they are <laughs> <laughs> And I forget, you know, I don't, it's like me, you know, it's just, you don't, mm. it's so easy not to appreciate life, you know, we, mm. and are we really alive? I don't believe that we are really alive, you know, so, mm. and also my mummy, um, she, when she died, I mean, she had lots of illnesses and dementia, and she enjoyed all of it. And surprisingly, I'm going to say it because you're so funny, so I'm going to say a funny thing. Who would have thought that my crazy parents would have had a happy ending? You know, I think it was their last joke to us. <laughs> for like the most crazy people to have a happy and light and ending. It was just a joke. Uh, <laughs> it just, but it is possible to enjoy your dying process I've seen my parents do it um yeah so you know it's all in your heart and your mind and especially the heart you know like you know that's the, the real power to to go well I believe yeah yeah thank you very much yes it's true in the end it's our heart it's our state of mind it's our being at ease with the world that's what is going to help us as we die yes yeah being at peace and and being at ease and just being being love you know and whatever happens whatever illness you can you can love everything, whatever the illness is, whatever the pain is. You know, it's definitely I've seen my mummy do it, and so I, I doubt our 
that will happen to me, but she was lucky. <laughs> well, she set an example. <laughs> these things have an imprint on your mind, you know. They can do yeah. it, so can I. You know, with my dad, because his his death wasn't as as easy as my mom's. So with my dad, you know, I asked him. I didn't want him to suffer too much. And I knew that mentally and spiritually and emotionally, he didn't have the capacity to... I knew that he didn't have capacity to, to die well. So I asked, you know, I asked him to be brave, to go quickly and, and not suffer too much. Mm. And he went very quickly. All right. Great. Good advice. I didn't want him to suffer too much. I really didn't, you know, that was... It's yeah, something yeah. that I felt shouldn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. Let go. Move on. <laughs> Even when people die, you know, after they after they pass away, they say that, um, well, if you do believe in um, rebirth and next life, Quite often, they hang around their loved ones, they hang around their homes, they hang around uh, because we don't let them go. We are crying and mourning and saying, come back, what happened? I miss you. So it's also part of the dying when someone is dying to say, move on. You know, we are all right. You've done oh, your job. You. Thank you for yeah. saying that because, you know, it's been hard for me over this past year coming to terms with what I said, but it's good to hear that you yeah. think it's okay for mm -hmm. me to, yeah. to have asked him to move on. Right, absolutely, absolutely. I, like I said, I don't know if you believe in rebirth, but... Um, being in that in-between phase where you are, have not moved on to a new life and when you're still in a, a, a ghostly f phase, is it's a, it's, a, it's a realm of suffering. You can't talk to the people you love. You can't do what you want for them, but you're still around. So... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're yeah. right. You're right, sister. And I didn't want him to be in that state. And it seemed to me that was the only option that we had for his future. And he, I, I know in my heart he wouldn't have wanted that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did what I could to, to make sure that that didn't happen. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let them go, my goodness. They're... Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, Thanks. and I was I was intrigued what you said. I don't know how you know. I'm guessing that my fantasy is that monks and nuns and priests mm -hmm. and other monastics, bishops, maybe because of their job, their work, they meet a lot of people who have relatives passing and that's how you know. But what you said about the loved ones coming, I don't want to freak anyone mm -hmm. out, but um, that happened to my mummy. You know, she had a very enlightened death and me and my sister were with her and she was kind of welcoming lots of ancestors that were kind of coming. Mm -hmm. Right. Seems and I to think be a... my, my sister said she even saw some of them. I didn't, couldn't see them. Mm -hmm. But it's, I, you've said that and I've said that, but we don't know if this is true, what we've just, what we've said. And I wouldn't expect anybody to understand this or believe this unless 
they had personally had the experience of of it themselves. Hmm. It's strange to talk about. There's actually to talk about. a lot of there, there's been uh, there's a been a lot of research done on near death experiences people who have died and come back so they have gone to the other side and come back to tell the tale this has happened so many times across so many cultures regardless of their belief that you kind of go this is what happens it's a there's a book called after by bruce um grayson it's uh, you can you can see it online he has a lot of videos as well of the ex he's he's thousands and thousands of case studies of people who have died and come back and say exactly the same things about seeing their loved ones about seeing the white light about seeing their whole life pass before them their whole life being reviewed it's fascinating like i said and it's a regardless of culture regardless of religion regardless of belief everyone seems to be having a similar experience so good book to read bruce grayson call after and and just google him and <laughs> all that all that is is really interesting anyway i i think we'll we'll uh, just only unfortunately got 10 minutes left so uh maybe um susie's and Sean, you can say, yeah, I'm so sorry. We we, we can also move on, talk a little bit more, I guess. But uh, thank you, Michelle, for sharing that. So I, I will unmute Susie first and then Sean. Um, hello again. Um, hello. I, yeah, um, you spoke about um, the Buddha. Um, the it's time after seeing the four about. I obviously know this because I, I researched it but um, <laughs> um the Buddha um went out um and tried to meditate afterwards. So his horse um his horse sadly yeah. passed away when he um he left the mansion yeah. and um there's this really lovely story called the Kanfa Kant Kant Haka Kant Sutta. Kant yeah, Suta. Um, so it's about Kantaka's mansion in the Vimana Bim Batu. I hope I'm pronouncing oh, really? it right. Um, yeah. But it's like a lovely story about um, Mag um, Magaliana um, seeing a Dewa, um, like a, a heavenly being, and is like, oh, what's this? Like, wow, it's such a lovely sight. Like, oh, it's a mansion with all these jewels and all these fish wow. and all these oh wow and he managed to find out who this person was and it was the horse that um, <laughs> helped um Siddhartha go out and um find his find his teaching um so it was like it was from um the, the merit from being so loving towards his his wow. um his his, his prince it's Prince, yes. Um, yeah, that's what I just wanted to say because it's like the happiness you get from because animals are very empathetic. The happiness you get from someone's um, mm. way of like showing showing like emotion and stuff, like the happiness you get from rejoicing in people. Mm. Um, that's like creates merit, and that can like cause good karma. So that's, that's what I wanted to add. Yeah, sorry. I'll um I'll Thank spin it you. Up. Thank you. That is very beautiful. Yeah, rejoicing in others' beauty is a source of great happiness for us too. Yes, and and Sean. Sean, you can unmute now. Hello, Venerable. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the meditation and the lovely talk. Um, yeah, I mean, on your question on how sort of the, you know, how do you feel about death and it being maybe morbid and morose, but uh, for, for me, actually, quite like Richard, I've found it um, and I do gen uh, find it, but I'm not always aware of it until I actually do it. Um, very liberating. Um 
because you just think, well, I can I can actually let go now. Like there's nothing to do. And what really resonated with me as well was when you were saying your reflections about um, stop trying, you know. And I feel like I, oh, I know I try so hard and so many things. And I'm always thinking, am I doing this well enough? Am I trying hard enough? What if I'm wasting my time? Is this the best way to spend my time? And within doing that, I'm not living in the moment. So clearly I'm not, ironically. But it's so just that reflection upon death can I find um and today uh, it's sort of reminding me that because I've, I've been very caught up I think in my thoughts well I definitely have recently so I found that uh really really useful uh and it's it's also useful just to speak and reflect on it with others so so thank you very much but yeah more than finding it at all um a downer it is I find it really liberating um so yeah thank you uh, I just also wanted to say, was it Michelle um, who made a comment about her parents that I remember listening to a talk, um, to something online, a YouTube talk, where Ajahn Brahm talks about a young couple and um, the, the, I don't know if it was a husband or boyfriend, was not very well. And, you know, the other half was going there to the hospitals and the hospital. And, you know, it was obviously a very sad moment for them. And eventually, I think it may have been Ajahn Brahm who said it. It was like, have you given him permission to die? Because he was really suffering and he was sort of hanging on. And she hadn't and she did. And then he died. So it sort of fits in with everything we've been talking about. And it was, again... So it makes you think like then you can let go. And sometimes there's when if you're in that moment, you're hanging on because you can actually see the pain of the others. So I think from what I've heard, that um you actually probably gave as your father a gift by doing that. So um I thought I'm just repeating obviously someone else's teachings, but maybe you can find it online and hear it put more eloquently. <laughs> Thank you. I raise my hand as well, Venerable. <laughs> okay, yes, my name. Just, just a couple of things. I put another book in the chat called Rebirth in Early Buddhism and Current Research by Bhikkhu Analio. And uh, he was telling that um, according to the research, most of the patients die in the hospitals after their relatives go. So they kind of try to hang on until the relatives go. And when there's no pressure, they kind of die. So that is that is the research that uh, people have done. Right. Well, thanks for sharing that. Yes, that's really very useful information. So I guess we have to wrap up for today. And that was so wonderful to thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for sharing and for being, well, quite wise. <laughs> thank you very much, too, Venerable Paker, for these important reflections and reminders. And thank you, everybody, for your comments and and also mm. for your sharing, your honest sharing. Mm. And despite the knowledge that we might not make it through the night, we have also, mm. as part of the Anukampa team, been planning for Venerable Chanda's return when she comes back either the last days of October or the first days of November. And we're planning to make sure that she is well fed and that she can be there for teachings and we can be there for visits and as part of this we would like to help her with meals and if anybody would like to offer lunch dana then i would be very grateful we would all be very grateful if you would have a look at the calendar the link i've just posted in the chat box it's anucamperproject.org forward slash calendar hyphen list and on this calendar there will be some dates 
in November and December that are either available or full. And if any of the available dates are available for you as well, and you would like to offer the lunch dana for Venerable Chanda and anybody staying at the Vihara, then please write to us at team at anukampraproject.org. And this can also be done from afar if you're not in the Oxford area. So there's no limitations from distance. And thank you very much for any support that you're able to give in this. We're, we're really grateful and we're trying to ensure that Venerable is always well fed and looked after. So thank you very much for your support. Take care, have a good week and see you next week. Yeah, sad, sad, sad. Good night, everyone. I guess unmute and... <laughs>